carving a duck with boots. What do you mean a duck with boots? Murray Lincoln is my name and my carving comes from Misty Hollow Carving. I'm going to show you an example of that, two of them today. Uh, one is a little bit bigger duck and you can see it here on the screen. Uh, he has boots on. Now the actual duck that we're going to carve for look at carving in the, in the uh, program today, uh, come over this side so you can see it a little bit better, is a duck about this side. So as I turn them, you can see that I used a lot more wood for the one that is on the right hand side. The one on the left hand side is just a little bit smaller. It's made out of a three quarter inch piece of pine. So let's get started. I'll share a screen with you. Carving my duck with boots. The uh, idea I, I picked up from Pinterest, one of my favorite places to get new ideas. And uh, if you haven't been to Pinterest yet, it's a word interest with the word with a letter P at the front. So it's something that you pin your interest to your board. Anyway, going on to that one day, I discovered a company uh, that comes from the UK or that's located in the UK that has a DCUK duck. And so by changing the two letters around, it's a duck from the UK. A uh, neat company and the basic design that I uh, brought into my work is shaped something like this. It has this duck that stands up in this upright position. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this duck is carved from a uh, piece of pine. It stands about oh, maybe four inches tall. And then I vary the size, the one on the right hand side is a little bit smaller and a smaller set of boots. And then I just adapted a little bit further. If I go back to that original one, the one that was here, you see the boots are uh, carved. One of my favorite kind of carve is the uh, old Brogan style from the Civil War. I started carving these, it became very popular. But then as I go to this duck, it's basically the same pattern exactly. Uh, top left hand side, you'll see the male duck with his mouth open and he's talking. He's got green boots on. A uh, female duck is uh, head up and watching everything. And you'll see that the legs are inserted into the body by drilling a hole and uh, putting it that way. Now the other duck we're going to look at today has legs that are attached to the outside. Top right hand side and then the bottom left, bottom right, you can see the little ducks that are following mama duck. The, buck, the ducks on the, uh, the small ducks boots are not carved separately, but they're one piece and carved to make it look like two different boots. And so these are kind of cute and they brought a lot of attention to people that I've showed it to. Now I, on this, uh, particular screen, I'd like to give you the opportunity to make yourself a pattern from that. And you wonder how you might do that. Well, by having it on the screen in the video, you simply would uh, stop your video at this point, or even as I'm speaking, and print screen. And it'll save it to your computer. You can put it into a file, into a program that would receive the, uh, program, uh, pro the uh, image. And that's the position of the duck that I carve is, is this upright vertical shape with the wings carved into the side. Next uh, picture to simply show you where the boots would roughly go below the body. But again, I'll talk about that later because it's something you have to experiment with a bit. Uh, next picture has the daddy duck it turned sideways and you can see the mouth open that gives you the pattern for that and how the boots are positioned on that right hand side, the baby duck. So as I come to that now, I show you my uh, blank cutout from the patterns that I made. I have about four knives that I'll use to, to, uh, to carve this duck. I carve very slowly, uh, small chips, uh, small cuts at a time. And one thing I'll warn you on right now that I started carving when whittling was actually about seven years old. I'm at 77 now. And that was a lot of years have gone by and it was quite a while into my life, my journey, probably into my 20s before I found out that whittling was actually called carving. It had transitioned from the pocket knife to fancier knives over the time. And so when I started that way without a glove, I learned that if you didn't uh, carefully hold the knife, 
as well as watch how you're cutting the wood, you can cut your finger. Lots of cuts happened over those early years, but as time's gone on now, I've had a much better success in learning to carve properly, using the grain, uh, knowing what the grain is, and reading it the right way, and also cross grains. So a very sharp knife helps in cutting very small and trying to concentrate, not being too close to your fingers, although you'll see some pictures here today that have me cutting closer to my fingers than probably some of you are comfortable with. But I cut very small cuts at those, those points. And the pad that this is laying on is one of the RV shelf paper uh, rubber uh, sheets that when you put it on top of your carving bench and push down on that uh, with your product that you're carving, it holds it almost like a vise. That's a little bit of the uh, background to that. So uh, the knife that's laying closest to the cutout is a GW knife. Uh, and, uh, George Warner from Peterborough here designed those. He's also, they're now being sold by another one of my friends. The uh, car, the tool just above that looks like a, a big flat chisel. I call it my beaver tail. And it's very, very sharp. I'd use it like a knife as well as like a chisel. And it'll, uh, I'll demonstrate some of how that works in this picture. So uh, there's a compass I use in making one of these ducks and some other uh, carvings that I do too. And you'll see a knife beside that with the same colored wood handle. It's a, a, more like a, a blade of a jackknife, a pocket knife. So we'll go into it now. I took the uh, measurement or to find out what the center of the uh, wood is. And by putting the compass on that, with the, running the sharp point down the side, like a scribe almost, it draws a center line for me to uh, carve up to. So it'll keep my symmetry that I want to have left and right the same. So now I start simply. Now this is a fourth knife that's not shown in the earlier pictures. And I received this from a friend of mine. Uh, it was kind of a treasure in that her father had passed away and she passed these things on to me to use and find a, a good place for them to be used by other people as well. So I've got other knives yet. Uh, that's actually not a carving knife, but it's a kitchen knife. And uh, this knife is, is extremely sharp. I don't think it's been sharpened or even touched up over the years. It, there's hardly any marks on the side of it and it's as sharp as a razor blade. So it does a good cut, especially makes it helps to take off a lot of wood at the same time. So doing cross cuts, it is away from my finger. Uh, don't be worried about that when you see the point over top my left hand, it doesn't touch my left hand at all. So small cuts, you can see using just the tip of the knife uh, it gives you a real good result that way. So as I'm working on the uh, lower side, I'm bringing it to kind of round it off, get away from the square, look up to the center line, and then a ways up the side of the body. Not too far because I'm going to be placing a wing there too. Some of the early cuts here, just from the breastbone up, of the, up to the neck, and then I stop, and I still will continue on with my carving of the body and getting it rounded off and the small cuts, uh, first bigger cuts that uh, you can see there towards the uh, bottom and rear of that bird. And then with the smaller blades, I'll do many smaller cuts to get it almost round. So there's less sanding. So this is early stage of getting rid of a lot of wood at the same time. So using the knife for coming up to the breastbone again, I get it almost rounded. And I'll show you on the back, the uh, similar way. Now, the interesting part about this bird that I find with some of the people that I would I teach carving to, the comfort bird uh, originally was a great thing for our first project because it uh, helped them to learn how to read the grain and also deal with cross grain cutting. And here you have the same thing. So the grain on this particular duck is going towards, uh, it's going uh, through the center of it from the top to the bottom. If you hold it in an upright position. And as that happens, it uh, then turns up towards that tail. Well, then you've got a problem because you keep on cutting further, you'll end up slicing off way too much wood and maybe even wreck the carving. So getting up to about the point there, then I'll make small cuts from the tail down to the body. And those are small kind of saw-like actions. Uh, move the, the blade from left to right across the cut and then push down. It's almost like a sawing action that helps me to get rid of that wood. 
So again, just to, as I talk a lot during the time that this is on, I should have let it roll a little bit further and faster. You see the wood being cut the same way here, following the grain up to about halfway of that duck. And then you'll change the direction of the cuts going the other way. So now I've got the body almost finished, uh, roughed out. And I'll come to the wings on the side or things I do next. It comes up from the breastbone, which is just below my left thumb in that picture. In the arch, I draw with a pencil down to the tail area, uh, following along that line. And then as you come towards the tail, I end there. So the next thing I have to do is do an undercut in that. Uh, this cut is uh, simply uh, dragging the knife along or cutting along that line that I just drew just a little bit, not too much. But then I'll go back and do it once, twice, maybe three times, putting just a bit more pressure. I don't want to lose the wing. And if there happens to be something in the wood that is a little different, I don't want to uh, be surprised by that either. So small, steady cuts help me to do that undercut on that particular piece. Now then the undercut, I start with a smaller blade that uh, in the first slide that I showed that a small blade to the right hand side that looks a little bit like a jackknife, the old pen knife. And it, as it cuts undercut, it does a nice slow job of removing material to get the guide. Then when I start to take off more material, I'll use the chisel on this. Now, you wonder how that gripping chisel can do such a fine job. Well, it's just by using the, the one side of the chisel just in a little bit in steady strokes, sawing kind of back and forth from left to right side of the chisel, uh, just as I wiggle it with my hand and push down with uh, my hand down with my uh, palm on my right hand on the body of the bird. And I'll cut that way. So there's taking off a bit more material towards the back and doing the cross grain cut. Now I start to shape the head. Now the head, if we know that as any duck, if you know what a duck looks like, the head is not as wide or as big as the body. So you see here, this is uh, going to be a duck that's more of a caricature not something that the wildfowl people would carve, but it's something that as a caricature carver I do. It's a stylized duck, I suppose is a way, better way to say it. And as it uh, is being carved this way, uh, or at least drawn on the top, it gives me kind of a guideline. So I go in just a little bit on both sides. Now it'll be a bit fatter when I draw it than actually when I carve it, so it'll be thinner then. So small cuts again towards the bill, and I want it to be almost sharp, and square on the end, so I don't want to lose the bill. Uh, taking off more materials again with that uh, beaver tail uh, chisel uh, knife, it really helps to take off material in, in a controlled way. I can do a good cut with that. I know a friend that uses nothing but that. He doesn't use any other blade than that beaver tail. That's his whole carving machine. Again, carving towards the beak and a bit more on the other side until I'm almost shaped the way I want. Now you're where my left forefinger is, you can see it's quite a bit wider yet. It's going to get thinner than that as I carve on further. Now I've gone that carving further. There's the cutout example above the one that I've just finished carving in these pictures. And uh, this uh, gives you kind of the difference of shape and size with the wings showing there, the undercut done on that way. And there's the contrast of how much thinner it is when I put it uh, into the, the, the carving onto that block of wood. Now, I've, when I do the carving with the, with the tools, I'll have chisel marks and knife cut blade marks, these flat areas that are all combined together. The smaller and smaller they are, it's almost round, almost smooth. I could do it by hand, but I found the rotary tool uh, just going over it lightly with the coarse uh, paper on there. Yeah, of course, uh, grain on that uh, rotary uh, tube, it takes off a lot of material quickly. So if I have a spot that's a high spot or something that's low, I'll try to bring that those two together so it's even on the side. So I can get the shape the way I want it. I want it to be almost smooth. The smoothing comes later when I use uh, three or four different kinds of grades of sandpaper when I rub this duck down. And then from there, I put the finish on. So. As I'm doing that right now, I'm getting, there's a contrast of the uh, three stages, really, of the uh, from the cutout to the carved one to the one on the right that has a finish on it with the boots showing. So I want to point out here, because we're going to move to that thought right now, 
the legs on the uh, right hand side of that duck, on the right duck, I should say, the finished one, are carved a bit the shape of a drumstick. And it's a very small drumstick, and they're glued onto the side of the duck. If you remember back on those earlier pictures that I showed you, the colored uh, ducks with the colored boots, uh, they were little dowels inserted into the body. And the small dowels going up about an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a little bit bigger than eighth, about three sixteenths. And here this leg is uh, positioned in the side of the body, which it, it gives it kind of a unique look. And you see the boots there again, the shape of them. And I'll just say something about as I look at this uh, leg, it, this is some of the difficulty of, of carving this particular one. There's two ways to do this leg attachment. Before I start carving on that stock piece, that duck is flat and I can lay it onto my drill press and drill one hole straight through. And so that hole is at the same height on both sides. This particular duck, what I've done is carved it or at least drilled two separate holes, trying to measure up to make them exactly the same to give me kind of an odd angle. That's what I was looking for, the way that the boots would be positioned. So you'll see here on this picture, uh, I want to point out here too something later that uh, when you're putting together, you want both boots to be the same distance from the body down. So, and the body should be vertical, should be perpendicular to the uh, tabletop or to the place that it stands on. Now, here's how the legs are put on on the left-hand side. It shows the kind of drumstick carving that I did. In the boot, I drill a hole in it and I glue that leg into the boot, getting this uh, perpendicular straight to right 90 degree angles I could. It doesn't draw on that way with that well, but you can see the dotted line where the drumstick goes into the boot. And on the right hand side, the way that these legs are fastened onto this bird is that I have uh, carved them first with a little small cuts to give it kind of a same contour and shape as the outside of the bird body, the lower part of the body. And then with a rotary tool, you simply can give it a nice smooth finish. And about one eighth inch dowel, I drill a hole into that small uh, leg. I don't use a power drill on that, but I use uh, a drill bit that's that size. And then with a hand tool that I can rotate it a little bit at a time to get the uh, leg, the dowel uh, shape, or at least the hole inside of that leg just right. So I can insert the dowel and glue it in. So once I get it in place, then I will insert it into the bird's body where I have another hole drilled to match that. Now, one th thing that I found out that really helped me is to drill the hole in the body just a little bit bigger, just a tiny bit bigger than the dowel that you're putting in there. So you can move the boot out further. If you're looking at the picture right now with me, the boot would be moved more towards me or it can be more to the inside. And so the effect would be, let's so go back here just a bit uh, to this next, to the last slide, so as I get a look on to, uh, head on to it. So the legs are almost straight here. They can be made so uh, the legs, the boots are coming closer together and the body's wider. And that is something that just it gives an effect to it. Now, something I just mentioned about the boots, you've seen a couple of pictures of it. You see the sole of the boot is carved smaller than the upper part. And this boot was an, uh, a design really from the old Brogan, it was called, a Civil War boot that many of the old soldiers wore, a very poor class of uh, boot, but it was worn until it was worn right out. And uh, the other person, the other place, if you're just old enough, maybe in my age, you'll remember little Abner's cartoon uh, strip in the newspapers, little Abner's boots looked a lot like this. Now, one thing you can't see right here, but I'll show you towards the end. I did the laces by doing a pyography burn on it. So as I come to the end of this, I'm going to uh, do a stop share here and come back to show you something of my uh, bird. Again, this is the larger one. And maybe I can hold it just a little bit closer so you can see some of the burn on it. Maybe it's not clear enough to do that, but you can see instead of putting actual laces in, there's a zigzag pattern where the laces be in little holes placed at the side of the boot, the little uh, burning marks to put it in there just to make it uh, look like a, uh, a lace that's in the boot. So 
Here's the smaller one again. It's a little shorter and a little bit different to that. And if I turn them sideways a bit, you'll see the finished look of it. My left is right and right is left on this camera. But it gives you the idea of what the ducks are all about. So the ducks have got attitude. And in the park where we go to and the geese that are there too, uh, often this time of year when the little ones are starting to come, the geese or the duck will start to let me know that I shouldn't come any closer. So with this short video and talking about carving a duck with boots, I hope that you can give it a try. It's a fun little project for this spring and summer. And uh, hopefully this whole thing will change and we'll get back together again with some of our shows. Have a great day carving.